so much, and thank you for being with us, and thank you as we go into this special time of the season where we celebrate the birth of your son. Lord, we ask that you be with this board this morning, be with the great people of Gulf County as we conduct their business. Father, as always, be with our law enforcement, be with our EMS, our first responders, be with them as they go out every day and put their lives on the line for us. And Father, also be with the great people of California. They're going through some devastation with some fires out there, and they, they'll overcome as long as they don't lose their lives. We can, uh, we can rebuild as they can out there. But again, be with us as we go into these holidays. There's a lot of people out there. This, this is time of cheer, and in some, you know, it's a bad time of the year. But touch their hearts and be with them. Be with all the people that uh, have drug addictions. Let's see if we can get them back on the right track and get over them. All the people that's laid in, put a touching hand on them. Father, we ask this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Okay, Commissioner Quinn. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Get out and get everything. Good morning to all and thank you for taking time to come out this is a special meeting to our December the 12th special meeting in behalf of the board we thank you for joining us and uh, we've got quite a few items this morning uh, as I was telling some I think we're just cleaning out the closet today or this is the end of the year and we we things just come together and we've got a few items we have to address so uh, again Thank you. This time, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to open up with the uh, procurement policy amendment and review. Mr. Attorney, are you, are you ready? Yes, sir. Uh, is everybody ready, Ms. Roberts? Yes, sir. Ready to go. All right. Okay. Right over here to our attorney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, as the chairman just in, uh, indicated, the first order of business that we have is a procurement policy amendment. Uh, in light of the P3 uh, statute 255 consideration that you have noticed for today one of the things in working with special counsel was to include uh, an amendment to your P3 or I'm sorry your procurement policy if you recall about six and a half years ago we had amended your procurement policy um, in light of the new statute that's come out since then as well as the CCNA language that we wanted to include for the hiring of future professionals engineers architects we've made some of those uh, additions uh, we have a couple things on the agenda today, so I've provided each of the commissioners a uh, binder. It would be the first number one tabbed in your binder, which is the procurement policy that I'm referring to. Uh, in summary, as I just mentioned, the Statute 255, which re considers the um, P3 consideration today for an unsolicited proposal under Florida statute, um, the one thing that is not changing your procurement policy that we've been talking to administrative staff and each of you commissioners individually about is the thresholds. Um, the $10,000 and $15,000 thresholds have been in place for some time now in Gulf County. Nothing has been changed in that regard. That's something that we've discussed with you and possibly can consider next year in a further amendment. But for purposes of today and the votes that you're going to consider, we ask that you consider including the um, CCNA and P3 statutes uh, and including them in your procurement policies most notably uh, paragraph 5 on page 3 where you'll see the 287 and then again on page uh, 5, uh, 4 and 5 with regards to your CCNA. And I'm happy to answer any questions for the commissioners and again I do want to note um, this is the first step in an amendment to the policy and we anticipate probably further amendments coming in January or February for your consideration. Roger. Thank you Mr. Attorney. Uh, any questions from any other board members? with his P3 to our procurement. Questions? <clears throat> I have a motion. We move forward here. We open for a motion. So move. Thank you, Commissioner. Crone, do I hear a second? A second, sir. Thank you, Commissioner Rich. Uh, is there any further board discussion 
Yes. Anyone in the audience any concerns over this? All right, having none. Well, opposition motion passed five and zero. Oh. All right, Mr. Uh, Turney, that takes care of the. All right. Go back to you. Yes, sir. Um, if I can, commissioners, I direct you to number two in your binder. Um, as you recall, for several months we've been working with you, commissioners, receiving authorizations along the way uh, for consideration of an unsolicited proposal uh, under Florida Statute 255. Um, its short name is a P3 statute. It is a public-private partnership um, that is provided for in Florida law. It gives you an ability to cons uh, consider and receive an unsolicited proposal. You have received one, um, and we had it was a confidential and privileged communication. It is a packet that's number two in there. That is simply a copy of what you've all been provided over the last month. I think it was, a, um, I don't have the specific date, November 3rd. Um, after that, we had a hearing and a public hearing where you all instructed us to move forward. Under the statute, it requires us to advertise both in a general uh, circulation for the county as well as uh, advertise in the Florida Administrative Register. We've done that. Um, we've met those requirements for advertisements. Um, and the applicant for the unsolicited proposal that has uh, proposed this project to you all has paid their application fee since then as well. Um, at your last meeting, you all voted in the affirmative to deem it an appropriate project. Uh, since that November 3rd submission and your public hearing, um, we as the, administra the administrative staff, myself, have all meet, met with each of you commissioners individually and discussed this proposal. Um, the other thing to note is the purpose of the advertisement under our unsolicited proposal is to give everyone else the opportunity to submit one as well for this floating dry dock. Um, and I'm reporting to you all, as well as for the record, that the county has not received any other um, unsolicited proposals with regards to those advertisements. Um, today, the purpose of the public hearing and to move forward is for your consideration, your uh, public hearing, your questions of staff, and then I'd ask you for several votes, um, depending on where you would uh, want to go with the unsolicited proposal. The next steps under the statute would be for you to authorize and accept this unsolicited proposal. Um, as you know, we've submitted a Triumph pre-application for the funding of this floating dry dock. Um, you've also approved the signing of the Department of Transportation's JPA for the site improvements um, that we'll accomplish through an economic development grant. But there'll be four votes today that I'd ask you all for. The first vote, um, after your public hearing, we'll be asking you to uh, authorize the staff to go out to advertise for a CCNA advertisement, um, an RFQ for an engineer to submit design plans for this floating dry dock. The second would be a CCNA uh, RFQ to go out and seek proposals from an engineer that's qualified to review it and work with the county for the inspections and to make sure that this floating dry dock is built according to those very high specifications and standards, and it's an 18-month project as it's projected for. The third uh, vote would be to accept the unsolicited proposal and to instruct the staff to move forward over the holidays and to begin to work on a comprehensive agreement with Eastern Shipbuilding Group where the county and Eastern Shipbuilding would come into a comprehensive agreement that we'd have at a future meeting date and you would all consider it for authorizing the chairman to sign that comprehensive agreement. What it would then do is we have three components to a P3. We're going to design a floating dry dock if you so choose. The next would then be to construct, and then the final outcome would be the operation and long-term lease. The first component I talked to you about was a CCNA, which is the engineer designing a floating dry dock. And then the comprehensive agreement with this eastern shipbuilding, as they propose it, would be that they would construct it, and then they would operate it long-term under a lease. And that was what the third vote would be for the uh, comprehensive agreement for the county to start. Myself, special counsel, start working and developing uh, the agreement so we can come back to you in the new year and propose that to you as well as to Eastern Shipbuilding. And then the fourth and final would be a vote to authorize us to um, draft and finalize an economic development grant so that we can get the DOT JPA funds to that uh, construction site so that uh, site improvements can begin in the new year. So those would be the four votes that I would ask for after your public hearing and consideration. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions with regards to number two in your binder, which is the unsolicited proposal. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. All right. Before I go open to the public here, on the public hearing, any board members have any questions here? If not, Mr. Attorney, I'm going to the public. Is that correct? All right, this time I'm going to open up the meeting to the public. 
they have any questions, concerns, or anything pertaining to this uh, is it private partnership proposal review. Anyone in the audience? Yes, sir. Tom Sims, Lou Hitchka. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, and then I was thinking, why was Eastern giving the county the great opportunity to own this dry dock? And then it dawned on me that if the county owns it, Eastern doesn't have to pay tangible property tax to Gulf County. Gulf County, as the government entity and owns the dry dock, has to pay the tangible tax. That's per the state of Florida. And then uh, I called out to <clears throat> Mobile to a shipbuilding company, and they said that their dry docks, uh, I asked them what the life expectancy was. They said they have some that's over 50 years, but they have to maintain it. Well, if the county owns it, then the county has to maintain it if they lease it to Eastern. So <clears throat> the uh, there's a lot of... You can't figure out what's going on almost. Uh, one says Eastern won the entire Coast Guard contract. Well, they did not win the entire contract. They, they won a contract to build one Coast Guard offshore cutter with, nine, with eight options for a total of nine. Well, the government doesn't have to uh, exercise those options. So if... if for whatever reason, the government decides not to exercise the options. They build one, and then the county owns a dry dock. So why why is why do we, would the county own a dry dock, and if they exercise the nine options and don't go on to the other 25 and they rebid it for somebody else and Eastern loses it, then, it's, then now the county has got a dry dock. What are you going to do with it? So the... Uh, and I assume the stuff you were talking about, the procurement, uh, would go out for bid. The, the star said that the, from what he got was that Eastern would build it. And the Port Authority in, in one of the star's articles said it could cost $25 million. Well, surely you would go out for bids, not just let Eastern build it. So my question is, have you all thought about this? Mm -hmm. Any answer on it? Be happy to. I'd be happy to try to, Mr. Chairman, if you want me to. Ms. Roberts. Okay, I don't see it. All right, Mr. Yes, Sarney. Mr. Chairman, um, just going down, Mr. Sims, a couple of the items that he had, um, the maintenance and the insurance, just as just. There has been no comprehensive agreement on the lease, and that will be part of this, but that is one of the um, basic steps in the uh, comprehensive agreement and the lease that will be designed with Eastern Shipbuilding is that when we do lease this to them for the 25, 30-year lease life, they'll be responsible for the maintenance and insurance. That would not be an obligation of the county. The county's not equipped to maintain a floating dry dock. This industry and this company would be. That would be a requirement of them that they carry those uh, items. With regards to the lease payments and optioning uh, phases in one versus nine, the lease also in its general concept and terms is going to be structured around job growth. And the commission has talked about economic development and job growth in the unsolicited proposal as well as the triumph pre-application. They're all tied to one thing, which is jobs. And so there's a pledge from the unsolicited proposal. There's Gulf County's triumph pre-application that all go back and reference specific numbers of jobs. Under the unsolicited proposal and the comprehensive agreement with Eastern, Gulf County then would receive that in the contract, in the agreement, in the lease. X amount of jobs equate to this much in terms of lease payments. So there will be a scale or a variable. Jobs go up, lease comes down, vice versa. So the payments would be reciprocal with that. So if there was less job creation from that site, then the lease payments would be more commensurable with just a straight lease on a floating dry dock of something of that cost and that nature. Um, with regards to um, optioning, 
uh, the comprehensive agreement and the pledge from the unsolicited proposal that you all have in front of you, it is more, as you all know in your discussions one-on-one -on -one with each of you, it is beyond simply the um, uh, defense contract. Um, they've already talked about outfitting other ships. Um, uh, I believe the Staten Island Ferry that they've referenced that they have on the front of their brochures. So there's a lot of exciting projects that they've obviously discussed and are going to be doing and considering here to add to that job uh, creation. Um, with regards to the intangible taxes, I know Mr. Uh, Hammond uh, wanted to possibly address those with regards to who pays that, the county owning it versus uh, Eastern owning that floating dry dock and the life of that lease. Just, just for example, the, the, the tax will be charged based on the value of the lease, just like your industrial park. That, that when you lease that, they have to pay tax on that amount. Now, if it is that, if, if, if there's 500 jobs, there'll be none, but there, there, there is a tax based on the amount of that lease. So that, That's not true. The, the tax is based on the value of the item, and, and it's not the lease. Uh, the, and and you, then you're talking about the lease. If it has a 50-year life, uh, 600 months, he's divided into to, uh, $25 million. That's $25,000 a month. Well, surely the county, when we want to recover all of the, the money that they put into this dry dock, so if you reduce the lease, then you're not recovering your money. I, Mr. Sims, I can address that one. It, at the former public hearings and the consideration of the commission, they've been charged with a question, and I understand that that is your opinion, mm -hmm. versus they're going to have to make a determination. And they're valuing the job creation, the economic growth in Gulf County versus that lease payment that you're referring to. On a straight lease, if we were in the floating dry dock business, each of the commissioners we've had a discussion, that you'd have a dry dock and you'd have a lease payment. What the commission now is doing with the triumph funds and this uh, pre-application and with the unsolicited proposal that the governor has created through this statute is a public-private partnership. They have a determination to make, which they haven't done yet, which is they're going to say, it isn't a straight this for this. We're not going to take a lease payment for this. We're going to put a value to what's going to happen to the economy in Gulf County over the next few generations, how many jobs are going to come from it, and we're not going to ask you to pay us in kind for each monthly payment. In lieu of that, you're going to come here and drive the economy. So that is a determination that they have to make today. And I understand what you're saying as to your opinion, mm -hmm. but the question they haven't answered yet, which they're going to do when they conclude this public hearing. But it is not uh, apple for apple, if you will. It is a job in lieu of the application of the triumph funds. Okay. And Mr. Chairman, just to, to answer too, there, there's no intent for us to ever make a penny or recoup a penny from this investment directly to the board. Our hope is that we create enough jobs that they will not pay a penny at the end. It's no different than us putting in water lines or sewer lines or a $50 million highway. It, it is not something that's going to be a revenue generator for the Board of County Commissioners or the Port Authority in our hopes. It is a going to be a job engine, and that is what this infrastructure, this piece of infrastructure is for. All right. Thank you, Mr. Hammer. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? We're still open to the public. Anyone? All right. At this time, then, we will close the public hearing. Mr. Attorney. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, there's two items. I, I know that I'm looking out in the audience, and I don't see is William is here. Uh, Over there. Yes, sir. I just want to let you know Mr. Harrison's here. Yes. Obviously um, representing uh, Eastern Shipbuilding. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions with regards to our individual meetings with each of you commissioners um, over the course of the last month or so as we've gone through this unsolicited proposal. Um, concluding your public hearing and any questions of the commission, um, then I would uh, have obviously those list of uh, votes that I would ask you for once you conclude that, sir. Right. Board members, do you have any any concerns or anything you'd like to implement with this? Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is, uh, as I stated at our last regular meeting, 2018 is going to be a big jump start for this county, and this is just some of the items that we have to address and go through. Now, back to uh, Eastern, uh, this isn't, with this dry dock, it isn't solely tied to, it is tied, but it's not directly tied to this government contract. There will be uh, ships coming in here for repairs, and we said we're looking forward to out of, I think it's New York City. Is that correct, Mr. Attorney? They're going to bring uh, some 
ferry boats down and they'll be docked right over here working. So it's not all tied just strictly to this government. It is tied, but there's other options and other, we will see other private entities using this facility and creating work and jobs in this county. Not only to help the people in Guff County, but we'll have to reach out to Franklin County, Calhoun County, Bay County to solicit enough workers to uh, support this big project. All right. If I could, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. We recognize. We yeah. could sit around and say, what if? Yeah. I, I mean, we're never going to get anywhere. We're trying to drive jobs. The intent of the dry dock was never for revenue. It's to drive jobs. And we've got letters from every board in this county supporting this project. And we all need to get behind it. Thank you, sir. Mr. Attorney? Ready for the vote? Yes, I am, Mr. Chairman. Um, if I, we, have, we have four votes. I yes, sir. So your first one this morning is you have... Five. Yes, sir. You've amended the procurement policy, which I thank you for. Um, the next is we've satisfied our notice requirements. We've conducted the public hearing under Florida Statute 255065. The first would be to a vote and consideration of this board for the acceptance and approval of the unsolicited proposal that you have in front of you as tab number two. All right, gentlemen. So moved. Thank you, Commissioner. Second. Rogers. Second by Commissioner McCrone. Any further board discussion? Anyone in the audience? Any opposition? Motion passed 5 and 0. All right, Mr. Chairman. Second one. Yes, sir. Um, by, by virtue of your first vote, we, the staff will begin to move immediately to work on developing that comprehensive agreement with Eastern, and we will bring that back to you at a future public hearing and date for your consideration and affirming vote. The second is to ask for your authorization and approval for the staff to go out and advertise for uh, RFQ. For under the CCNA statute, which is a Competitive Consultant Negotiations Act under Florida statute, to pr uh, procure uh, an engineer to design this floating dry dock. All right, this is for the engineering. All right, thank you, Mr. Attorney. Motion. Okay. Gentlemen, motion by Commissioner McCrone. Second. Second by Commissioner Rogers. Any further board discussion? Anyone in the audience? Any concerns? All right. Having none, if there's no opposition, motion passed 5 and 0. Oh. Thank right, you. Mr. Attorney, let's go to the Thank third. One. Mr. Chairman, the third would be uh, your vote to approve the staff to go out to RFQ and solicit proposals to procure an engineer uh, to uh, inspect both the plans and then to oversee the construction and project of this. They would be essentially the county's engineer for this special project. Good deal. We need that. All right, gentlemen. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Quinn, for the motion. Thank you, Commissioner Risch, or the second. Any further board discussion? Anyone? Anyone? Any? Anyone in the audience? Having none. No opposition. Motion passed. Five and zero. Oh. Right, item number four. Mr. Attorney. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, number four, as I mentioned, we have the uh, JPA that's been finalized between the DOT's general counsel and ourselves. It has been voted on at your last meeting to authorize you, Mr. Chairman, to sign that. Um, and we will return that to uh, the DOT so that state appropriation funds are available and will start flowing to the county. Um, I'd ask for an affirmative vote to uh, authorize us to draft and finalize an economic development grant that we will bring back to you for the chairman's signature, enabling us to now transfer those funds under that JPA to this site so that we can be in site doing those site improvements in the new year. Good deal. Thank you, sir. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Quinn. Second. Second by Commissioner McCrone. For the board discussion, anyone, any questions from the audience? No opposition, motion passed 5 and 0. Oh. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Attorney. Yes, Mr. Chairman, that is all I have uh, for number two. I just, uh, I apologize, number three, or actually it's now a letter, it's B. B. Thank you, sir. B. Um, right. And again, I wanted to thank Mr. Harrison um, and Mr. Discernia, um, the Port Authority members and the county staff, and as well as the commissioners for making themselves available to, uh, it's been a, an intense project, and I know it's only the beginning, but I just wanted to thank each of them for all their participation and help. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'm going to shuffle our agenda just a touch. We're going to take the last item, which is triumph, and I'm now going to move it up.
and we're going to address the triumph and because of we have quite a few people here mr yeager are you with us this morning I am. I think mr hammond, mr. hammond. all right thank you sir for Chairman, <clears throat> based on your votes opinion. uh and the letters that i put in your your packet at the at the back from the two cities and the school board supporting this wholeheartedly uh all right like mr hammond we recognize you go ahead you have the floor <laughs> i apologize mr Chairman. oh no problem <laughs> we we would like a resolution sent to the Triumph Board supporting this project as Guff County's project based on the, the letters from the two cities and the school board and that we oppose any other outside project other than this project this year. I heard the word this year. This year, that's right. This year and this year only. All right. This will be our number one project. We're talking about? Our number one and only. 18. Yes, sir. 2018, right? That's correct. All right. Anything else, Mr. Hammond? That's all I need. All right. I need a, uh, the attorney to write it if we could get a vote of the board. So moved. Sure. We, thank you. Motion by Commissioner McCrone. Second with discussion. Second by Commissioner Quinn. Discussion. Chair recognizes the commissioner. Just just a quick comment. Y'all go get us some jobs for Gulf County. Right. Anything else? That's it. Any other board members? Anyone in the audience? Just need to get behind this project. Yeah. We just, we, we got to have it. For anybody that can't see that, something's wrong. So. All right, sir. That's it. Thank you, Commissioner. All right, any further board discussion? Anyone in the audience have any questions? Having none, well, opposition motion passed 5 and 0. Oh. And, and Mr. Chairman, one more yes. thing, skipping back to that, I just wanted to clarify for the board because we didn't state it, but it, it was intended. On that JPA, we actually got the executed JPA last night. It, it will be sent back today on the on the $6 million. Part of that money, in addition to what the, the attorney just spoke of, will pay for that design for that floating dry dock. And, and, the, and the, it's a pretty good chunk of money, about $700,000 for the design. Much about seven hundred thousand dollars for the design or in that ballpark so we just want to make sure that, that that the board understands that we will be spending some of that money on that design that won't be coming from from another source it'll be coming from that jpa that dot jpa or that design in addition to those improvements on this on the site that we talked about all right hello miss sam yes sir thank you sir thank you <coughs> let's move now ladies and gentlemen mr uh Jaeger, did you have any any other uh, concern in Triumph? No, sir, not on Triumph. I have the five-year plan. That's on the All right, we, we'll address it very shortly. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to move into now into uh, a public hearing on uh, uh, this is county road abandonments. And uh, Mr. Novak? Yes, sir. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, your last few meetings uh you have all bottom tab which yes sir it's actually going to be three through nine all the remaining tabs um and Le leanna has aerials for the audience as well as you if you want to have some visual aid up on the television screens put them up here yes sir right. on the television go ahead all right sir um similar to your road abandonment considerations by the commission we wrote a policy a few years ago that if somebody in the public wanted to have you abandon a road or right away there's a very strict and um, stringent standard that they need to go through a process um, and that is so that everyone in the public is aware of it there's also a Florida statute that gives the county guidance as to the notice requirements um, in your binder tab number three as you'll see right there is the what we've done is we've gone ahead and advertised as required by the Florida statute um, the four proposed abandonments and at your prior meetings you have taken uh, several steps one was to um, waive the uh, policy requirements for the county to pay a fee itself for these considerations um, but we have followed the majority of the remainder of the policy even though you uh, waived it for us to do this um, one of those was to actually put physical notices at the end entrance to each of these roads um, in your binder you'll see 6a as well as 5a those are all pictures taken by the public works of the actual physical signs that were placed on each of these roads um, so that anybody that lives around them would also have notice of today's hearing. Um, as I indicated, tab three is the News Herald proof of publication. 
uh, announcing today's meeting for the consideration of these abandonments. Uh, the first one, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, Commissioners, is uh, tab number five, you'll see in there, is GT14. I, I apologize. It is GT14. Um, actually, tab number four is County Line Road. If we can, we'll start with that one. Leanne, if you can bring that one up. Um, two of these roads are a process that we've been working with Calvin Winder, Council for Deseret, who's here with us today. I know Mark Michael Archibald has joined us at previous meetings as well. Um, and in discussions with the administrative staff, and then we've had individual meetings with each of you commissioners, they have proposed the abandonment of some of these uh, long-standing uh, county right-of-ways that they have been maintained by this commission and the taxpayers. They own the property on both sides of these proposed abandonments. Um, so what they'd essentially be doing is cutting off access along their property. Um, and as indicated, for decades, the county has been maintaining these uh, county right-of-ways. In the discussions with Deseret, um, they have proposed that there would be an abandonment of County Line Road that you have up on the overhead there. That's indicated by the blue line. And then there's Gulf County Road GT14, which is indicated by that orange. Um, there's actually specific descriptions in the uh, public notice, as well as would be in the resolution if you chose to abandon these two roads. Um, sorry if I'm going and I'm just give you all a chance to look at number four okay number five is actually another uh, depiction of GT 14 and I'd like to deal with those two first because the other two don't have anything to do with Deseret um, with regards to County Line Road and GT 14 um, the consideration by you today would be to abandon those if you chose to do so following a public hearing a resolution would be drafted, be put up for your adoption at a later date, and then notice of that adoption of that abandoning resolution would be recorded in Ms. Norris's uh, clerk's office, and from there on, those right-of-ways would be abandoned by Gulf County, and they would become part of Deseret's property. Also, as part of those discussions with Deseret, um, they had proposed uh, that the, the uh, commissioners have been trying to work, obviously, in great cooperation. As you all know, we, we re received Willis Landing from Deseret, earlier this year um, and in those discussions the Commission has requested that they can uh, transfer over Odina as well a part of these discussions the understanding with Deseret is upon the abandonment of these roads that the county would receive Odina Odina and the legal that's being prepared by Mr. Smallwood is a depicted in tab number seven in your binders um, and we were waiting on the final legal and description once we have that, we'll give that to Calvin, and they'll provide a deed of conveyance over to the county for that boat ramp and that access road. So that is part of the consideration today. They're independent issues of one another. Um, all you need today to do is consider your public hearing and a vote on the abandonment of those two roads. And at a later date, we'd have a resolution and the adoption of that resolution. Um, but I'd be happy to answer any questions with regards to both County Line Road and GT14. I mean, let me just clarify one thing. I know, I know GT14, is that on Road 12? Uh, sir, right, Mr. Smallwood. GT14, I know Cal CCC12. Yeah. Oh, is that it? Yes, sir. Okay, all right, I know where it is now, Sheriff. Thank you, for yeah. yeah, You used to live right there. Sir, road 12 is, is tab number 8 in your binder. Yeah, okay, all right, all right. We, we, we'll get that. But I was just clarifying GT14. Yeah. It, I didn't know if they had changed the name of that road. I don't believe we've maintained it, not in my time with oh. the county. It, it's, a, it's a CCC road. It's an old government road. And some of these are ones that have been gated for a long time or, or we haven't maintained, but, but they're not owned specifically by that because we got them through the, through the process of the government built roads back in the Depression and, and afterwards. This is one of them. It's, like you said, it's that Harrison Curve area toward the Bay County line. Yeah. One of the Me with the yes, sir. One of the considerations under tab number eight, and I and I left it out of the equation before, is that Deseret has also proposed to um, relinquish any rights to G, uh, G Road Twelve, which is tab number eight in there as well. So that is part of this proposal as well, and that's in there. Yes, sir. So the county receives the, uh, exclusive rights to that. Clear up a deed. Yes, sir. All right, at this time, Mr. Attorney, I'm going to go out to the public here, see if this, this is the uh, uh, public hearing. 
And the first time we have four roads here we're going to address, but first we'll address the uh, first road on the tab is the county line road. I don't know if anyone in the audience is familiar with this road. Is anyone? Uh, let me just get you up to speed on it. Over in Weaver Hitchcock Highway 22, which goes to Panama City, right there at the Gulf Bay County line. The road, if you're going from Weaver Hitchcock to, over to toward Springfield or Callaway, it's to the left. To my knowledge, I've uh, I never knew that was a county road, and it, it, we have not graded that road probably. I don't know. I deer hunted a lot out there. Never seen a motor grader out there on it. And uh, it is absolutely no use to our to the county. We don't. There's no residents live on it. There's, it's not a connecting road. And uh, our good friends Deseret Cattle and Timber that's come into our county here and chose of they had the choice and they chose Gulf County to set up their headquarters. But uh, anyway, this road is of, of, of no real true value to us. We don't even maintain it. I don't know if we've uh, had a motor grader on it in the last 20 or 30 years. I honestly don't know. That. I haven't seen any out there. But is there anyone in the public, we're open to the public, this is for County Line Road. Up off of Highway 22 right at the Gulf Bay County Line. It separates Gulf and Bay County there, but it's in Gulf County. Any questions? Any questions? All right. Mr. Turner, you want me to close there and come back to the second one or just stay open and go through these? How you want me to do it? Yes, sir. If you can do one at a time, if we can address right. County Line Road and then we'll close that out. After All right. Votes. Okay. I got you. I got you. Just follow me. All right. Anyone on County Line Road? Any uh, commissioners here? On Anyone? All right. If not, then we're going to close to the public on the closure of County Line Road. All right, the next one is in this same general area, approximately, what, Sheriff, a mile, about a mile maybe, back to the east toward Weaver Hitchcock. It's the Gulf County Road GT14, which also Deseret owns both sides of the road we're talking about. All right, we're open to the public now on Gulf County Road GT14. Anyone in the audience have any concerns or would like to speak on GT14? All right. Anyone? Okay. Board members? All right. This time, then, we will close on County Road GT14. Mr. Chairman, if I can yes. just add for the record that the proposed termination of that from uh, GT14 would be at Williams Bay Road. And that's where it intersects. So as you look on that map, you see where GT14 yep. ends. Just for the record, if you just if we can include that, it would terminate at Williams Bay Road. Williams Bay Road. Yes, sir. Okay, let me put this. All right, sir. We'll move on to the next item. Yes, sir, if you will, um, if we you can you vote on consider over? a vote on each of those individually, and we can move on to the other. On these two? Yes, sir. All right, ladies, uh, commissioners, we'll drop back up to the county line road, vote on the county line road. These are two with Deseret. That's the reason we opened the public there. So we're going to address a, a, a vote to proceed with county line road or whatever the wishes of the board is. I hear a motion to proceed. Motion, sir. Closing of county line. Thank you, Commissioner Rich. Any second? Second. Second by Commissioner McCrone. Right, sir. Any further board discussion? <coughs> We've already been to the audience on this. If there's no opposition, motion passes 5 and 0 on County Line Road. Now let's drop down to the next road in this same general area is GT14, about a mile east of County Line Road. I'll entertain a motion to either move forward with the closure. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Commissioner Quinn. Second. Second by Commissioner Rogers. All right, any further board discussion on this? Already been to been it. We used to know it as 101. Oh. GT-14. Huh? GT-14? Yeah. All right. That sounds more familiar. All right. All right, any opposition? Nothing. Motion passed 5 and 0. All right, Mr. Attorney, now we're going to address two roads in a different area. This will be over east of Weaver Hitchcock, close to the close proximity to the Apalachicola 
It lies between the Apalachicola River and the Dead Lakes. And there, this is land of a uh, uh, vast majority of it is with Neil timber, but there is some residential, not residential. There is some landowners over next to the Dead Lakes portion of this property. So at this time, Mr. Chairman, if we're in order, we'll address the Muskogee Road. Muskogee Road. I'm open to the public for Muskogee Road. Anyone in the public have any questions or concern with the Muskogee Road? I do. Sir? I do, yes. Please, come on up. Jerry Roberts, uh, we've asked the commissioners or a commissioner to secure the roads. We didn't ask for the roads to be abandoned. We want, and we've asked the sheriff's department to patrol them because of the damage due to mud boggers. And they just, uh, they don't have the manpower to put policemen or vehicles over there to maintain them or to, to stop the vandalism. And the county's come up with a want to abandon the roads, which we don't want the roads abandoned. We want roads secured where we can have access to our properties and the other people on that end of there too. So that's what we're requesting is, is help to secure the roads to keep the damage down so they can be middle, middle, um, maintained but at a minimum cost. So uh, maintaining them is, is not, I don't think it's going to help us, the property owners. The, say that the maintaining? To, the, <clears throat> to abandon. abandon them, excuse abandon me. Mm -hmm. To abandon them is not going to benefit us. We would like to have them. I mean, they've been maintained by the county for close to 100 years. Well, I've been here 70 of it, and I know it was done then, so. Okay. The county's maintained those roads, and they did used to come all the way up to, to the properties, but they cut back and to a cul-de-sac and said they would maintain them to there, and then we'd maintain <coughs> any of the rest of them. So that's the way it's been for the last 40 years or 50 years. I just don't see that where it'd be benefit to us, to for the county to just abandon the roads. That's gentlemen. I've been pretty much on this. I'd address this. Hey, Mr. Roberts, you and I have talked extensively on this, and I've talked with each of the landowners in this area. Roads not being abandoned. We've had so much vandalism our road department right over here yes I, I see it all there and i don't know how many thousands of dollars we spent over there in october uh we had to move a, 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 a and uh these and I, i've stated in prior meetings this is not high school kids this is 30 and 40 year old grown supposed to be responsible people that are going over there and just mutilating this county road and we had the taxpayers out here have to spend thousands of dollars to we have to go in there i have to send my work crew in there about every three months televisions mattresses household garbage now they wised up a little the sheriff over here at deputies we would go in there and search through the garbage and get a name and go back but now then they wised up they take all their mail out well we can't <laughs> trace them down and animals get in and scattered all over God's creation. But the big landowner that, that, that owns land on both sides of these, these roads, I know you're a landowner back in there. We've talked with him extensively with Neil. They said they will go in there and they will gate off this road and they will maintain it. And you, Mr. Roberts, will have a key to come and go to your property at your choice. If you want to carry me with you in there, that's fine. If you sell your property to Mr. Quinn over here, he has that same. Any of the hunting people, it's, there's a hunting club in there, J.O. Hunting Club. Every one of those that's in there will have access to get into their hunting leases. So it, it would be a win-win for both of us, but I can't, uh, or this board can't. It's not me. We can't, every time we have a rain, send a crew over there and spend thousands of dollars the taxpayers' money maintain a road when the, it's uh, we can maintain this. This property owner was secured, and if 
I'm not a member of the J.O. Hunting Club, so I really have no business in that area. Now, you'll think again, we have a nice paved road. One of the, uh, I guess it would be Rich Harbor Road, come through there. But there's a nice paved road. I'm not going to pull my boat with my trailer down through there and tear the axles out from under it. Now, when we got a, a, a road, a big, nice paved public road goes right around to the boat ramp, and you can go all the way to Scott's Ferry with just a short distance up there. By the way, we had to go up there and spend a week. It, it will be paved, and that entire road over there will be paved. But to get back to your original question, there's, it, it's not, a, we're just going to shift the responsibility over to the landowner, Neil uh, Timber, and they're going to maintain it for you and keep you a good road and keep all people going there at night. The hunters, I've had a lot of complaints from the hunters. They said people going there at night, shining lights. They'll be in there trying to hunt in the mornings this time of the year. Vehicles driving back and forth in there. So that's that. That's the whole purpose of this. We shift that back. And Neil owns all the land. Now, down where you're talking about, there's a gate there. And there's some uh, uh, people from Columbus Yard. I spoke with them yesterday on it. And uh, they want to be where they can come and go to their property. But the way it is now, they can't. I, I haven't been over there this week. We had rain this weekend. I don't know. I just didn't hadn't had the opportunity to drive over there and look. But that's the whole thing, Mr. Roberts. We're not, uh, we're not just, it's not being abandoned. We're just going to shift the responsibility back to the uh, Neil. And nowhere uh, we have, and here's another thing. While we're on this, I don't want to get too strung out on this. We don't, correct me, Mr. Cawthorn, um, Mr. Collinsworth, we don't actually show, that we actually, do we actually own that? Have you found anything? You know, it's kind of like uh, 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 back in the days, roads got graded, and they just kept getting graded. It's like, and uh, we don't really own it. It's like a lot of times people say, well, it's in the Bible. Well, it's not in the Bible. Things. It just gets misused. And that's it. So we've maintained a road that we don't even own for years. Yes, we've maintained. And there's an old saying, well, if you grade it twice, it becomes the property of the county. Don't believe that. Nothing to that. But that's all we're trying to do. We're trying to help the county, the taxpayers of the county. We're trying to help the landowners over there to secure their property, stop all this vandalism, stop all this scattering of garbage. That's the whole thing behind it. We're not abandoning you at, under no circumstances. Okay. Can I, <coughs> can I yes, ask something? Yes, sir. You sure? I'm I, sorry I, I got long. No, I, I've never been on the road. Couldn't tell you where it's at. But just Mr. Robert, from his standpoint, you know, I don't want to see him handcuffed either. No. Get down the road, if they come back and said, you know, we, we all got to chip in, and you know, you know what I'm saying, you know, is there something we could work out, you know? This will be with the attorney. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I just my concern would be with him at a later, later date that he wouldn't be handcuffed with something he couldn't afford or something you know that. That's, let me intervene again then we'll go now, this is just to proceed and there'll be what a couple of three I don't know how many days but anyway in, in this will be with uh, Neil they will stipulate what they will do they will maintain Oh, the road passable for, for the, you can't landlock people and uh they will maintain and all that'll be worked out and we will come back for a final vote is that correct mr attorney yes sir there's going to be a resolution if you prove exactly. to abandon today i'm going to come back to you with the resolution and you're going to adopt that resolution um there's two things on that on all of these really um as the ones you abandoned before you have a private landowner with no other access issues um, they'll maintain it or gate it off and not maintain yeah, whatever it. On, these, do it. on this particular one, it has a 100-year a history. The county has maintained it and graded it over the years. They have gated it just recently, and they've ripped it down. Um, there's liability issues. There's the co continuing cost to the county, but the private landowners are aware of the hearing. Um, they're working on maintenance agreements amongst themselves as well as easement access for those folks that need to get back there. For the county to abandon it, you remove your obligation to maintain that and that becomes that private landowner Neil Timmer is going to do that going forward 
after today's vote, I will come back to you with a resolution okay. that lays out where it starts on Iola, where it terminates at the end of Muskogee, same as Rich Harbor, off of Iola that intersects with Muskogee. And at that time, you'll adopt that resolution. Um, and like I said, if someone has an access issue, I'd encourage them to come and talk to me so I can bring that to you during that your consideration of the resolution. Um, and like I said, as we go along this, this road, as you look up on Muskogee, um, and, and Mr. Roberts has an issue, I'd be happy to talk to him afterward. But this will be brought up at your next hearing for a resolution. Good. All right. I want to go ahead and let's address Rich Harbor while we're on this, being that they're both in the same area. Yeah, go yes, sir. On this. Yes, sir. And just and like I said, for the record, the, the two you're considering right now are Muskogee. It's a Gulf County uh, owned and maintained right away, commonly referred to as Muskogee Road, that begins at Iola Road. Um, and it's adjacent to parcels owned by Neil Timber, and it's heading west to its terminus on a parcel also owned by, also owned by Neil Land and Timber Company. The other was uh, Rish Harbor that intersects as well, and it's a Gulf County owned and maintained right away, commonly re historically referred to as Rish Harbor Road, that begins at the intersection of Lake Grove Road and GU Parker in Gulf County along the adjacent parcels owned by Neil Timber, and heading north northwest to its terminus at Muskogee Road on a parcel owned also by Neil Land and Timber. Um, so those are the two for your consideration today, um, your public hearing, and then a vote. All right. Sir, if I can, I just wanted to add, Leanna, if you can also, um, for the public and the commissioners, go to the uh, physical signs on Muskogee and Rich Harbor that you have up there um, so that the actual constructive notice to the neighboring properties was also provided. As you'll see, there's um, hazard horses in the middle of the road as well as cautionary tape, orange and green signs posted on both sides, and some of it depicts actually some of the conditions of the road. Actually, it's, it's the other one. That's that's up on the north end. That's not. Thank you. And I'll be happy to answer any other questions. There's no file on that one. We have a reminder, sir. Yes. Yeah. Uh, seven. I'm sorry. Six. Six A. All right, at this time, we want to stay with the public. Let's address Rich Harbor Road. It's in the same proximity, and Muskogee Road leads off of Rich Harbor Road. Anyone in the public? One in the public, open to the public on Rich Harbor Road. The one in the public will close to the public on Rich Harbor Road. All right, we'll need them. Coming back to the board, we'll need a vote on Muskogee Road to move forward. The closure of Muskogee Road. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Quinn. Second, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner. Any further board discussion on this? Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. We recognize. And not trying to. Y'all know better than I do on the north, but just so that we could. You know, sit down, with Mr. Roberts. Whatever we need to do to get his concerns, you know, worked out. And I'll be with Mr. Roberts okay. after the meeting today. Okay, that's all. That's all. Okay. Well, if there's no opposition to the any other full board discussion here, if none, if no opposition, motion on Scogie Road past five and zero. Oh. The next one we'll need a vote on Rish Harbor Road. I hear a motion for the so move, move, sir. proceed with Commissioner Rogers. Thank you, sir. Uh, second by Commissioner Second Rich. Right, any further board discussion? Further board discussion, motion passed 5 and 0. Oh. Gary, if you can wait around just a little bit here, we're moving along. Our attorney will meet we, and also, it's my understanding, I was talking with a landowner yesterday from Columbus, Georgia, and, and uh, Mr. Coston, a local attorney representing him on this, and they will work all this out with county landowners and also with the yeah the landowner neil and the private landowners back in the area okay thank you all right the next order of business ladies and gentlemen we're going to address is the medical leave policy amendment hammond are you going to address yes, that yes sir mr chairman thank your, you sir your packet on the top number right, right here uh, an amendment to the personnel policy for medical leave of absence need, need the board to approve that please
All right, I have a motion to approve this medical leave of absence. All of you had an opportunity to look at it. So moved, Mr. Chairman. All right, sir. Thank you, Commissioner Rogers. I second it. Thank you, Commissioner Rich. Discussion. <coughs> Discussion. We recognize. What's the major change? Oh, yeah. We don't have a formal policy uh, other than FMLA, uh, which, you know, the, the federal regulation. And this adds some uh, teeth to your policy for, for long term absences. Uh, we have folks that have been out for more than a year. Uh, we can't close the, the position out or fill it, and, and it leaves public works, especially in limbo. So this allows uh, uh, the FMLA and allows staff, uh, the administrator, the system administrator, to extend that uh, 12 weeks by 30 days, and, and it can be extended again based on certain criteria. Okay. Got a motion? Second by Commissioner Rich. Any anyone in the audience over this? The board, no opposition. Motion passed five and zero. Oh. All right, Mr. Hamlin, we're going to be with you here for just a few minutes. Uh, yes, sir. The next issue. On Honeyville the track. Let me just read this. What people know? Honeyville track is an overburden, or this is topsoil uh, removal. Sale update now. Yes, sir. Go ahead and address this good for the people understand. In, in, in looking at uh, where we are with the Public Works Department and, and paying to have that overburden removed to get to our good sand, uh, the, the recommendation for staff is that we use that overburden on the two upcoming major projects that we have that the county provide the, the, the field dirt for the shoulders on 386 and the Howard Creek Road. So the first thing I'd ask you is that uh, that the board approve us to direct the county engineer for 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 the specs to be written in such a way where the county provides the dirt uh, to whoever the contractor that gets those jobs to to build the shoulders and and do that work, which is going to be somewhere in the million cubic yard range over those two projects to build those shoulders. All right. Now, would you also explain that we're not giving this away? No, no, no. The county will 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 receive fair market value for that, and we'll price that uh, the, based on the board's previous direction that the right. public works superintendent will price that. What, what, in a nutshell, what he's saying is we we need this dirt. The uh, contractors, the paving contractors, agree to buy this dirt from the county, and so we need to get about X number of feet removed to get down to the sand and so this is a way we can make you the taxpayers can make uh, we can generate some county money and we're not giving it away the contractors agreed to buy the dirt from us for these we got two major projects here 386 uh hopefully when they do 71 from white city in if they need any they'll buy it from you the people and i'll put some money back in our coffers okay now where my train of thought? I done lost there. Are you ready for uh, motion? We get direct. Oh, so move. All right. Thank you, Commissioner McCrone. Second. Second by Commissioner Rogers. All right. Any further board discussion? All right. Anyone in the audience any concerns on this? We'll get the engineers to move forward on it. Uh, no opposition. Motion passes five and zero. And the next thing. Uh, we would like permission to negotiate with St. Joe to buy that U-shaped piece of property that surrounds. That is in this same area. The same area. It, 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 there's a, roughly 150 acres, leave like 146 or something like that. Uh, 139, 139 acres. 139. That that belongs to St. Joe now. That we're, we're right in the middle. That's correct. But you want to move forward with negotiations with the St. Joe company? Is that correct? Yes, sir. Or the purchase of this? Yes, sir. If we can come to an agreement, we'll bring it back to, to, to yeah. the board in the in the January meeting. You just want to open up negotiations with the St. Joe Company on this property. All right, sure. all right. I have a motion to move forward on this. Oh. This is up at the 200 acres, oh, yeah. right behind Honeyville Park. And there we own what 200 acres, and I think <laughs> our neighbors, Deseret, do they own some property there? They, they basically this this 139 acres or whatever this U-shaped piece is an yeah. out parcel that St. Joe kept around that pit. Deseret owns just about everything else. And then I guess east of that, 
uh, is private landholders east yeah, and south. Yeah, it is. So uh, this would this would take St. Joe out of the picture in that area where they basically are landlocked, and we've already agreed to give Deseret the the access uh, through through our road over there to, uh, to access their property. Uh, whatever road that is. Well, I can't one one's to look forward, and the other look forward. Down, that's it. Yes, sir. That's right. All right, all right, gentlemen. Uh, we need a motion to move forward with the negotiation with the St. Joe County. So moved, Mr. Purchase Chairman. Of 139 acres. Thank you, Commissioner. Second, Mr. Chairman. Second by Commissioner Ritchie. All right, any further board discussion? Anyone in the audience on this? All right, having none, if there's no opposition, motion passed 5 and 0. Oh. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Hammond, Honeyville track and open burden. We got that part. Uh, beach restoration. Are you going to address that? I think Commissioner McCrone's going to start, and then I'll go, or, or however he wants it. to go. Uh, how would you, Commissioner? It's in your district, and uh, uh, this is a big boy right here. Would you like to open up on this? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and I, uh, if I could right, get Mr. Right Yeager here. to come front uh, forward. To come yeah, he's coming. Well. Here he comes. Uh, we have beat, beat this thing to death, haven't we, Warren? Yes, yeah, so I we think wore we, the sand out. Uh, Lord, we have met with everybody from here to Alaska, I think, and. Uh, <laughs> We're we're to the point that one. What's y'all's recommendation? We you, you know where we are at. You know, I think we're pretty close to getting your recommendation. We've got several different options. Uh, we've got a combination of options. We actually met with the low bidder, even though that y'all had rejected all those bids because of the numbers. We actually met with the low bidder just to get their uh, input on on the project. And there's a number of reasons why it ran high, and you you were in that meeting, so. Uh, but uh, I, I think uh, probably in the next month or two we'll be able to make uh, a recommendation to you or give you two or three options for y'all to, to find, make the final decision and it may be a combination of, of uh, uh, doing some pumping and, and doing all of our sand or it, 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 we'll, we'll be ready to do that. One of the things that you, you, you may want to consider and one of the options that you may have is to actually um, uh, kind of reverse bid this thing and that that come up in one of our meetings that we had with our our coastal engineer to where you could say and they bid these projects like this before is we've got 10.6 million dollars we want the bidders to bid on how much sand can you pump us for 10.6 million dollars and then you can look at the scope of what your what your job is and the design of your job and decide if you want to go with that uh, reduce scope or uh, uh, whatever they bid so that's one of the options that you may uh, take, and I'll let, I'll let Mr. Hammond give you a little bit in, more information on that. Uh, we've tested uh, in many locations on our 200 acres. We have got, we have got good sand, uh, good beach-compatible sand uh, in our acreage and, and all that we've tested. The grain size is actually uh, somewhat better than what you would pump from offshore. Uh, so it should stay there a little bit better, but there's a lot of different various factors and we're still trying to move this project forward. We know we've got to do this project. You did it one time. It's a piece of infrastructure that we know we're going to have to maintain over the years. So I think within the next 30 to 60 days, we'll be ready to put some things in front of you that you can look and decide which, which option you want to take. And I'll defer to uh, Michael on. And, and, and we may want to workshop that because of all the options. I mean, we're six million dollars short. Is the is the brass tax, and we've we've got an application in with with the legislature that that uh, Ms. Hardman and and the attorney and I hand delivered uh, last month to to Tallahassee. Uh, it it may or may not fly. Our lobbyist is working on it, but that'll still leave us even with that. It'll leave us four million short because part of that was was for uh, for the infrastructure, whatever we want to call the the uh, ballards or yeah or whatever you want to call them to, 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 to slow down the erosion I, I was you were in the meeting we were all in the meeting to about I was very disappointed with the with the with the low better the attitude and, and whatnot and the, and the cost savings that they were able to provide was in the hundreds of thousands range not in the five six seven million range so the reason I'd say workshop it because it's going to be a, a, a hot potato because under every scenario uh, Either we're going to have to shorten the project, meaning that the folks on the, the north end of that project are, are not going to get sand at all, and do a feeder beach type deal to, to, to put that $11 million worth of, of, of sand there, or we're going to, to have to narrow the project, which basically means that it won't last as long. So, I mean, we're really defeating the purpose by the time we got through doing that. 
uh, we'd be need to start the project all over again. So we can haul it, even though it's going to be a lot more difficult for us long term. We can haul it and 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 do the project from our own site for that 17.5 million dollars. We believe we can get in that number. So I mean, it's we've got a lot of options. We're just short on money. So uh, that may be the the thing to do. We'll we'll have the recommendation sometime in in January. And I would suggest that, that we hold a workshop and, and let the public have input. Uh, cause the, 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 the thing is, everybody tax themselves. The major problem is, you know, south of, of Rich Park, it's actually accreting in a lot of areas north of that. So it's not like that, that everyone won't benefit from putting sand on the, on the, on the stop pole area. But that wasn't really what we sold. So we really need to make sure everybody's involved in the in, in whatever decision the board makes moving forward. I think the only thing I would add to that is two things. Uh, number one, uh, the uh, monies that you've appropriated in pot three uh, was for some erosion control on the Cape. So I don't want, I, I want the public to know that y'all are putting an effort into making sure that these, this piece of infrastructure that you're putting out there in the sand, we're doing everything that we can to make sure that we uh, make sure it stays there. And so you've committed about $3 million. I'm going to propose to you probably in pot one some supplemental to that also so you can uh, let your coastal engineer work with DEP. There's structures that work in, the, in, in these occasions, and they build them all over the world, different parts of the world. So uh, I think with putting some monies into this, uh, uh, you're showing the public that you're you're not just throwing sand up there and just letting it go. You're making an effort to make sure that you do you're doing everything that you can to maintain that beach uh, the best way that you can. So instead of doing this project every 10 years like you've just done it, maybe we do it every 15 or 20. Uh, well, I wanted to mention that. And, and added, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Right over here. And added to that, it, we we're trying to set up uh, with our lobbyist in D.C. Uh, a meeting about the uh, the Eglin property, the, the best location, based on our engineer and, and what folks are telling us, to put the, that jetty system to start it, if we do multiple, is right at the tip of the point. That's where the worst erosion is, and that's where it needs to, to start. And if we can get some movement on that with, with Eglin, they didn't participate either time, but if we could get control of that property or get permission to put, put that jetty or that, whatever we want to call it, growing, there at, at that point and step them back as we head toward the stump hole, then that will be a very big positive. And I think we'll, we'll start accretion in other areas just like we have in other places. We've looked at some that they've done different places across the United States that, that really work. One of them that's, that's fairly new is at St. Andrews Park that, that we, we looked at the other day. One other thing to add to that, is because it, there's, there's a broad, broad range of issues that, that comes up in all these different meetings. You've put money into uh, pushing that effort on Coburn. We've been doing that for eight or ten years. The last meeting that we had uh, uh, with the Department of Interior was the best meeting we've ever had, and we believe it's because it's a, a change of administration. I think we're, we're as close as we've ever been to actually uh, removing those that amount of acres uh, out of the uh, Cobra. Cobra, and if we can do that, uh, when you have a storm or when you have a loss of sand like that, you can get some federal help. Uh, to help you maintain that beach once you have a storm. So there's a lot of components to working on this issue. And I can tell you, I, I'd be scared to say how many hours staff has worked on this particular issue over the last couple of and months. I, and I can tell you, I've seen it, and Mr. Chairman, you have too, and we've all, but we have spent hour after hour. And what would have been nice if the bids would have come in where we thought they were coming in and we wouldn't be here. That would be easy. <laughs> we don't, I can tell you, we don't want to have to deal with this, you know. And nice that graduates come in and do their job and go about their business, but, but we're not there. So, do we need a motion for a workshop or up a workshop, Mr. Chairman? Or what? I would propose that we do a workshop, but but I don't know if we I don't know if I want to give you a date uh, sometime okay. in January. If if maybe if we could schedule it uh, maybe before the next regular scheduled meeting. That we do it maybe the hour before we do it at eight or at eight fifteen, or and uh, I, I think we can have you some options that that may include, like Warren said, the reverse bid. How much sand can you give us for this amount of money? Are we talking about with a low bidder? 
No, we're going to rebid. The, the, those beds are dead, and and you know that was another argument we had with him. He, uh, you know, he's forty percent high, and and you know, and and so every on this big a project to keep us all out of trouble, we need to rebid this project. If when we get to that point, if if that's the, the board's decision, we do we yeah. we will not be negotiating on dead bids. Y'all have rejected them, and I let me say this: I spoke with Mr. Butler, and. Uh, a lot of you may not know he lost his mother over the at our funeral services Sunday, and Mr. Butler's taken a few days, which he's surely entitled to. But I uh, understand I didn't sit in on the meeting. It's in District uh, Commissioner McCrone sat in there, and um, Mr. Butler uh, uh, bring me up to speed, said that the contractor was really a little bit on the arrogant side, and... Uh, a little bit demanding, and, uh, you know, we got enough money to buy a Chevrolet, but we can't go out and buy a Cadillac. So uh, that's what we got got to work from. It's like the old summit down. we got to paint this car. That we got to paint it, or we're going to spray paint it, or we're going to brush paint it. But it's got to be painted. So Mr. Yeager has spent numerous hours working on this. And at this, these bids come in, and we were very optimistic that they would come in. But when they come in, over six million dollars we just we don't have six million dollars floating around and we can't go back and the, the people that voted a tax on themselves they want to see something and i do too i want to see some sand going oh it's uh dredging would be the ideal that's my opinion versus hauling we don't seem and it's ironic that they have a dredge sitting right away in panama city I'm sure we could get a shrimp boat to pull the dredge over here, and, uh, and they won't charge a million dollars to move the boat over here. Well, that's a million right off. That that just don't make good sense to me. But anyway, uh, you want to go to the workshop? Is that what you're proposing? All right, Mr. Yeager, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'll entertain a motion that we have a workshop prior to our next regular meeting, which would be January the when? 23rd. 23rd, okay. And you, will, Mr. Hammond, you work with the clerk's office and set this up and get back to the board. All right, I ha I'll entertain a motion. So moved. All right, thank you, Commissioner McCrone. Second. Second by Commissioner Quinn. All right, any further board discussion? Anyone in the audience? Anyone? In the hey, yeah, we got a couple here. Uh, Pat, you want to come or you want to yield to this gentleman? Whichever one. All right, come on up, Wood. How you doing, sir? Mr. Wilson. That's him. Yep. Good morning. Give your name to the little lady over Roland here. Roland Wilson, 7151, Cape Sand Blast Road. That's him. Mr. Wilson, you have four, sir. Uh, two things. Yes, sir. Well, you may not have considered one. Who's going to rebuild the highway if you move all this sand, 15,000 to 64,000 <laughs> dump truck load? The roadbed's going to be gone. Seventy thousand plus. Mm -hmm. right. They're gonna probably be overloaded. We have uh, discussed that in depth about this road issue as, and the inconvenience to the people in the the time, and also with the trucking, you got a time frame. Yep. And uh, we're dredging it, setting off out in the water, that not affect the uh, our highway system. All right, sir. We we have we've that's because that's one consideration that's got to be uh, addressed for sure. The other, I sat on the first renourishment uh, advisory right, board. The state was supposed to have given a study on building a bridge mm -hmm. at the rock pile. It doesn't take a coastal engineer to look at that erosion there to realize the current is coming right toward those rocks and going north and south. It's trying to get in the bay. If you would let it go to the bay, you would eliminate or possibly reduce a great deal of your erosion <laughs> right there. Why keep fighting? something you'll never win. You keep pouring money in the water, pouring money in the rock pile, and it will not cease. Let the state, and they were supposed to have already finished the five-year study, 
on building a bridge there. To me, it would be a whole lot easier to build a bridge on dry ground and then cut a channel than to build a bridge in the water. Uh, DOT's opinion was they didn't build bridges on dry ground. But it makes a whole lot more sense to me. Why has not further study been made rather than spending money on obstacles out there to break the current? You're not going to change it. You're just going to rearrange this flow. Let it go where it wants to. There have been studies already done. According to the Star newspaper, a fella can show you exactly where currents used to go through to the bay. The peninsula was not always a peninsula. It was islands. Let it do what it wants to. It'll cost you a whole lot less over the long run. I voted I, two times. Just a minute. One, uh, I have a motion. Move. Second. You. Second. All right, sir. Give him Miss Roberts. No, no, I'm one uh, no, other okay, okay, all right, go that's ahead. We all, just, just procedures, that's all. I know. Uh, but I voted twice for this beach project. Yes. I cannot see voting a third time in favor of it when nothing has positively been done to address the problem at the rock pile. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Michael wants to say something. All right, and I got to go to yeah, Pat. Yeah. Pat, hold on. Before Mr. Pat, Pat I just want to speak about the bridge. Yeah, uh, it's it's already situation. Um, they they pretty much already killed the bridge idea because it was $70 million was there. That's, that's, the state's that, that's correct. Well, they, and, the bridge can surely be built for less than that. You get the politicians out of it. The, the, uh, we, we went and met at Chipley with uh, DOT a couple of months ago trying to get them to live up to their commitment that, that they had made with the previous administration. Had a very good meeting with Secretary Philip Gaynor. But but they have taken the their bridge design, which included it was more than just the bridge. They had about twelve million dollars worth of land acquisition and, and some other things and it was uh, so it's off the table for them. They they spent a bunch of money designing it but but it's off the table because it's cost prohibitive. And now they were looking at a non elevated uh, basically a causeway it's a it was a sheet piled it still it would allow the water to go over and but it was it would be something like they did on the Eglin Air Force Base on 98 after it washed through the last time but it was still astronomically expensive it just was they didn't never give us a firm price but 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 it was still less than half of what the bridge cost would be so either way they're not looking at at the at, at allowing it to flow naturally whether that's a good idea or bad idea I've heard both both sides but the, the for the state paying for it, the bridge is off the table for the foreseeable future. All right, thank you, Dr. Hardman. Anyone else? All right, come on, Pat. Just very quickly, um, um, Pat Hardman, Coastal Community Association President. Um, I can't say enough about the staff and the amount of effort and time that has been put into this project to try to come up with a solution. I think we all know that this county has about $11 million to put in the project. Uh, I would make a couple of suggestions, and I would love to have the workshop. I think everybody needs to move forward. One of the critical issues is, one, we don't have any more money to put in. It doesn't mean that we aren't trying to find it. As, as Michael has said, we went up, got it in, we've got it in the state budget, $3 million, and that'll be matched by DEP, so that'll be a little bit more get us about up to where we were to begin with, not up to the $17 million. But that's, the, that's out there, and we're working that, and I know you're a lobbyist to work in it. So I would ask that we, we kind of structure this thing as in phases as opposed to just saying we got this much money. If we say we've got this much money for the first phase, because you have already put money in the pot for um, – for the, not the triumph funds, but a different restore pot to bring some more money in here, which yeah. the DEP will be matching, which will bring us more sand. So if we could look at this in, in the phases, the obvious critical phase is down at the rocks and up about five miles. That's going to feed up anyway. 
But if we could do it phase one, phase two, and look at full project, but look at as we can bring monies into the table, we could we could maybe get the whole thing done properly. And with that, those structures are one of the key factors of, of slowing down the effort. So the, the breakthrough at the rocks, whether it occurs or not, the science, and there was an stu extensive study done by, this, by DOT on that, that's not part of the reason for the erosion as you go up. Their, their, break, their science thing says your breakthrough will not create less erosion. It's a different way. It will change your uh, water temperature in your bay. It will change the currents in the bay. It will change the tides in the bay. You will have one of four bays in the whole world that have only two tides. It will go to four. So there's a lot of negative, including erosion on the bay side of the peninsula if it breaks through in that state. So having said that, we're back to protecting that beach, protecting our homes, protecting our environment. We have the most turtles out there of anywhere in the state, and they don't, they got to have some sand to lay their eggs in. So, I mean, it's environmental, it's economic, it's engine here for the county, as you are all aware. So it's not a matter of not being able to do it, it's a matter of we got to find a way to do it. Time is of the essence. That's one thing that we can't keep putting off. That's why I was hoping that we could negotiate maybe with a low bidder and say, hey, come back and tell us what you can do. Uh, I know y'all have reversed things in the past. That may be one. If you don't like what he has to say, then go out for a bid. That would speed up the process. If y'all would go ahead and say, go talk to that guy and come back and say, what's the maximum that you can do? And, and then if you can't do that by January, then put it out for bid, but putting it out for bid gives more cost to engineering out of the pot that we have, and we may be back right to the same low bidder again. So if we could just go talk to him and say, hey, give me your best bottom line for what you can do for me, that may save us a month, two, three months time. We're going to lose homes, people. Hauling, I, I love the idea of selling our sand, making some money for the sand county and what have you. Hauling is really not a good option. It may be for, for coming in later and fixing hot spots and what have you, but you can't move 55,000 truck loads down there. It would take you three or four years. We'd have another three or four million dollars we need. So can you consider at least letting the staff negotiate with the low bidder and see what he can come up with before you put it out to bid. All right. Okay, Pat. Thank you. Uh, and I want to tell you, I, uh, I can't say enough about what y'all have done, and I just appreciate well, it. Well, we were talking about this, and when the good people, the gracious people out on the, in the Cape area or the peninsula, you know, they voted. This is the second tax they voted on themselves. But of the uh, of the five mile there, the probably uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Probably sixty percent of the problem was in the first mile and a half, or maybe two at the most. How many? Two and a half. There's where the major problem is there at the stump hole. And two options I've looked at this way. Uh, I've said this numerous times. Uh, I live up on the on a river, and we have erosion up there in our curves. But uh, on our sandbars, they grow. Some obstacle can wash up there like a log, and the sand will start building to it. And if maybe we look at this, I don't want to rule out the option of a jetty or something there that might create an area where the sand can start building to it. But I, I'm I'm in fine with you. I we paid a coastal engineer, and every time we changed. Uh, like in your house, when you want to change from a 36-inch door to a 32, it's going to cost you. And uh, we have spent a lot, lot, lot of money on engineering. We surely have. So we're going to, we've got a motion on anyone else. Hey, Butch, good morning to you again, sir. Come on up. Butch Klein, 3607 Cape Sandblast Road. I also want to thank the staff, the commissioners for everything they've done. On beach renourishment, I've been on the outside look in for the most part, but I appreciate everything's being done. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, the homeowners out there have voted 
to have sand put on the beach. I know it's not that simple, but uh, time is of the essence. And, you know, none against a public workshop and 30 days for this and 60 days for that. And it's been 45 days since the bids were opened, I think, maybe 30 days. Yeah, about 30. Uh, the time keeps going, and I almost get the feeling, and I don't, I hate to say this, but we're kind of kicking the can down the road. You know, my dad always said there was a time you got either got to shit or get. <laughs> but I think it's getting time, guys. I really do. And I know you're working. I, I know it. God, I'm, I'm very impressed with the amount of work and attention you put in on it. But time's of the essence. It yes. is just there. We can keep kicking the can down the road. But there's about four houses that I know aren't going to make it through this winter, or chances are they won't make it through this winter. And we've got a lot of home building going on out there right now. We have. Okay. We have. But if they start losing homes, who's going to buy property and build a million-dollar home out there, guys? And that comes back to economics of the county. And I know you can't just rush into it, but, man, 30, 45 days come 60 days come 75 days. That's all I have to say, guys. Let me tell you, Butch, honestly, this morning when I got out of my car, the wind was blowing. First thing popped in my mind, I looked at that direction. I said, that cape, uh, that stump hole's catching it this morning. Yeah, uh, it was. Dr. Hardman, is that correct? The wind was blowing. I'm, I'm telling you. About blew me off my deck this morning. I said, my goodness. We've got some. And winter months is what really hurts us it is does. winter months. It does. And uh, we're just going to. I don't know how much we're going to lose down there. You know, just from today, yeah. I'm sure we'll lose some. I don't some. have the answer. And no. I don't have the money to All give right. you. I wish I did. Okay, Butch, we're going to uh, That's all I got, guys. We're going to move on to this. All right, uh, anyone else? All right, I have a motion on the floor to uh, uh, implement a workshop here within the next, prior to our next meeting. Do I have a, I got a motion and a second on that. Is any, anyone else? If not, is any opposition to this workshop? Motion passed 5-0. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's see where we're at. Beach Restoration. No. Mr. Yeager, sir, you want to come back up, and we're going to address, ladies and gentlemen, the multi-year implementation plan. It's a five-year plan, and uh, there we go. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be I'll be brief. Uh, as you recall, we did a multi-year implementation plan and and had a number of projects in that plan. But the number one project was uh, uh, beach restoration at that time. We got that plan approved by Treasury and have submitted the grant application and have about got that approved. And then the, we, we've hit this snag of how we're going to do it. So we may have to change a few items in that grant. But at any rate. To move forward with your next projects, and, and I know you've already approved a welding program at uh, uh, We Will Hit You High School and those kind of things, we've got to amend that plan. And so what Treasury is recommend, recommending us do is do a five-year plan with a number of different uh, options. Uh, options there, and then you can, you can decide when you want to start implementing those options. Right now you have a million uh, dollars in uh, over and beyond what you've committed to the beach restoration project. You've got a million dollars in there. You'll have another approximately 500,000 in April there. And then from then on the, for the next 12 years, you'll, you'll have another million dollars a year that goes into that. So what we're trying to do is just get, get your approval to proceed with uh, writing a five-year plan so we can go ahead and start the grant application for the welding program in Weewall and then proceed with whichever next item that you, you particularly want on that. On that in that plan and and most of these items uh, as you recall you had a, a restore committee that uh, put a lot of uh, effort into uh, figuring out what kind of projects to do and and most of these projects were in there we added the uh, welding program and one or two other items but most of these uh, programs were, were originally uh, recommended to you by that restore committee so I think what I needed from you today is just approval for us to go ahead and proceed with uh, amending that plan and putting it out for 45 day public comment period once we get that uh, plan approved and submit it to Treasury gotcha. anything else mr. Yeager I think that's it mr. chairman thank you sir yes, I have a motion that we have you had an opportunity to look this over I have and so moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Quinn. Got a motion by Commissioner Quinn. Second, Chairman. 
Second by Commissioner Ritchie. All right, any further board discussion on this, Mr. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Yeager? It Thank looks you. like these are projects that will help. These are, but these are projects, ladies and gentlemen, that helps everyone. Everyone will benefit from these projects right here that we've got. This just like this welding program. We're gonna, we have one in Port St. Joe. We're going to have one up in Weewehitchka. It'll tie right back into this port. Uh, uh, our port and our shipbuilding, that'll, that'll help there. And a lot of it is sewers to get away from the septic tanks and get on sewers for Beacon Hill, Weewehitchka, Port St. Joe. Right on down the line. But anyway, the sheriff over here, he's been operating out of a travel trailer over there for years, but I think we've got found something that's going to give us a really update. It'll last us 50 years, so this five-year program uh, will be great for us. All right, anyone in the audience, any questions? All right. Butch, I don't think you would have wore those pants up. <laughs> we were all here about three days ago. <laughs> I got you. That's Florida. All right. I hit, we have a motion in a second. Any opposition? Not motion passed 5 and 0. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Yeager. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's see if we can get some of this out of the way. We'll be recycling it. Uh, Mr. Hammond, let's address this one as briefly as we can. Chairman Cook. Very simple. Quickly, this is a public hearing for y'all to, to start the process to set as the regulating board. Uh, instead of the Public Service Commission for Lighthouse Utilities. And I think they have a representative in the audience if sure. you'd like to have them come up. All right, sir. Do we? Here we go. Come on up, please. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Name for the little lady over here. Michael McKenzie. I uh, work for Robertson Associates, but I'm here representing Lighthouse Utilities today. Lighthouse Utilities, okay. C. Uh, as we've stated before, Lighthouse is requesting to come under the auspices of Gulf County as opposed to the state of Florida. Uh, that means revenue for the county that has been going to the state. Uh, the county would sit as the regulatory board over and would have just jurisdiction over Lighthouse. I'm not aware if the attorneys for both have made any discussions, but uh, we can ask Jeremy and see. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, once you all, and I know Commissioner McCrone asked for a public hearing on this before you moved forward to get input from the public, if and when you all move forward on this today, the next step would be to advertise a public hearing for an ordinance adoption, and we would then pr present that ordinance to you. Um, so that would be the next step between the two attorneys. Just move for there. All this right. just starts the process. Yeah, yeah. The, the county will not incur the cost of advertisement and the preparation of ordinances. And obviously, they all have costs and consequences. So once you move forward, then the next step is the ordinance phase. So this is the very first step to move in that direction. I have a motion. Start the procedure. So move. All right. Commissioner Cron, your second. Second. by Commissioner Rogers. The board discussion. Let me. Uh, Back on the public. Yeah, I'll get them in just a any, any board for I'll say then I'll go to public. Mr. Hammond, all we're doing here is, as I, uh, Mr. McKenzie said, stated and for the public, that the Board of County Commissioners or the county will control if there's any uh, increases or decreases or whatever. Instead of going through the state, it'll go through the county. That's great. We will have a board set up. To, uh, to implement the policies and the procedures there. Now, am I uh, that's correct. Way correct there? You would take complaints uh, if they have a, a, a dispute exactly. that cannot be satisfied between themselves, and they would have to petition you uh, for rate changes or, or things to that nature. That's pretty much it. Disputes and rate changes is pretty right. much what the Public Service Commission So says. we would handle it on a local that's instead correct. of versus the state, and the monies, was, instead of going to the state, would come into the county coffers. Is that correct? That's, that's correct. All right. Good deal. Anyone in the public on this? All right, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. McKenzie, thank you so much. Have a great day. Mr. Wilson. First off, I don't think any of you know anything about utilities. You're going to have to go to school and probably learn how to regulate them. Secondly, why 
all of a sudden the lighthouse want you to do it instead of the state and disregard forty thousand dollars they're going to pay that regardless where they go the state has been and will be equipped understands utilities knows how to regulate them there's nobody up there that has any friendship brotherhood whatever you want to call it with the owners of this utility so they are pretty much impartial i, I just can't understand what is to be benefited on our end i'm out there in the uh utilities district i, I buy water from them and I can't understand what's to be benefited by this change. I hope somebody can tell me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Chairman. Yes, sir. Hammond. I, I think the the major benefit it, it to the county would be, of course, we get to collect the funds, just as he said, and it is about $40,000. The, the change is the change in the law. The, the Public Service Commission is wanting to, to get out of the, the, the little mom and pop operations. And there used to be a uh, requirement that every, either they all had to come off or, or not. And we had several that were independent. Guff Air was independent, Barrier Dunes before the city took over, and, and Sea Cliffs was independent. So you had at least three private utilities in Guff County, and they would have all had to either come off or gone on. It's extremely expensive to do business with the Public Service Commission. They hire a lawyer. We just hired them to do our P3 statute, and they're, they're real expensive. So I think the the utility wants to cut expense from not having to deal with the Public Service Commission because it's a, you know, it's one thing when Florida Power and Light deals with them; it's another for for a small utility. So it, it's totally up to you. The Board of County Commissioners, when I was on the board 25 years ago, said it's the Highland View Water Board. So you've had. Unfortunately, you've had the utilities before. We used to have full water systems and a sewer system, and we also. I don't expect this to to be a big deal for the county to to manage. Uh, but you know, any rate change, I would rather a rate change if I were on that system come to the county commission where I elect them, rather than appointed board. But it's totally up to y'all. I think it's the major benefit. It will be a savings to that utility. Okay, if I could, Mr. Chair. Sure. Sure. My main concern is the public, and I want to hear from the public. Uh, Dr. Patch, you want to speak to this, or? Pat Hardman, this time I'll go personal, not from the standpoint of uh, my, my major question is somewhat the same. Uh, the Lighthouse Utilities uh, uh, infrastructure is old and getting older. Uh, will we have the same impartial coverage by our board or our people here who have some impact? Positive side of it is the utilities not paying as much. They're making money, more money. Um, I just want to know, make sure that we aren't spending 60000 to get 40000 and that would be one of my major concerns. Might it help the utility company if it does? Maybe then they could put some of that money into the infrastructure as opposed to sending it up to the Public Service Commission. So it's a it's a balance of the coming back and having an impartial group look at them and slap their hands like the Public Service Commission does if they need it slapped. But if they could put, they take they got extra money and put it back into the ut utility company, that'd be great. But that's up to y'all. Yeah. Uh, not just making utility money is more money. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Mr. Chairman, yes. at the end of the day, I, I sit on the city of Port St. Joe board, and utilities is not any fun. I'll be the first to tell you, you know, dealing with the public. So we just need to look, take a hard look at that before we decide. But All right. Well, there's, we have a motion, a second, to... Uh, Proceed with the advertisement for a public hearing. Is that correct, Mr. Attorney? Yes, sir. There will be an ordinance public hearing for your adoption of this responsibility of the service utility. So we'll have it in January. We'll be advertising the paper, and it will be another opportunity for the public to come and comment sure. when you consider the ordinance. Good deal. All right. We have a motion. Anyone else in the audience? 
Uh, we're going to try to move along here. We have a mo any opposition to the motion? Not motion passed five and zero. Oh. All right, Mr. Hammond. Yes, sir. Uh, Donnie Brake Park, a walking trail bid, and I think Commissioner uh, Rogers, this is. We we got permission at the last meeting. Uh, yes. Commissioner Rogers brought it up to do a change order with Roberts and Roberts not to exceed. We were unable to uh, deal with with them on this project. They don't have anything to do this small of a deal. So our recommendation is to go out for bid. Uh, our engineer tells us what it should cost. Their cost was higher than that. So uh, recommendation to go out for bid and see see what we can get a smaller contractor to do this this job. We we know we. We've done some work uh, in Commissioner Quinn's district. We know what it cost last time. We think we have a good ballpark for what it will cost, and then we'll bring that back in, in January if, if the board so chooses. Good deal. All right, gentlemen. We need a motion to go out for bid. So moved. Yes, thank you. Commissioner Rogers. Your second. Go out for I'll bid. second, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Rich. Any further board discussion? Anyone in the audience on this Donnie Brake Park? I think it's a walking trail. Is that correct? Or uh, Yes, sir. yes sir. All right, I can't keep up with everything. All right, if no opposition, motion passed 5 and 0. Oh. All right, Mr. Hammond. Yeah, I've, we're I've got spending the day with you today. All right, the St. Joe Company uh, Economic Development Agreement. And, and this please, is on the road and completion board. All right, sir. And please bear with me because I'm going to have to read this uh, mm. to, to, okay. to straighten up. Our, in, our intent originally, the board authorized us to, to go in partnership with Port Saint, uh, the St. Joe Company. Or up to 150,000, 50 50 split. Our intent was to pay them our half initially. That yeah. didn't work out to the, to the best. So we wound up uh, doing a change order to a current contract with Alan Brock that does our road maintenance right now for the county roads, dirt roads, to, uh, to, to, to do this project. And then the county hauled the the, the dolomite on the road. So I need to read these couple of items in for you to approve it. You've already approved the amount. We just need you to approve these specific things. First would be to ratify the addendum of the Brock clearing and excavation contract. We need to uh, ratify the addendum uh, to bid number 1516-26 in the amount of $23,850 for the Tier 1 gravel access road project at the old mill site. Roger. Gentlemen. So move. Thank you, Commissioner McCrone. Your second? Second. Come back, Commissioner Quinn. Any further board discussion? Anyone in the audience? Having none, any opposition? If not, motion passed 5 and 0. Oh. Number two, we need an exception to the bid policy for the entire P3 mill site Tier 1 gravel access road project. We need a motion to approve an exemption to the county bid policy, public private partnership, Tier 1 gravel access road under exception 8 for exceptional purposes critical delivery, time schedule, availability of service, prior experience of the vendor. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. You have a motion for this? So move. All right, thank you, Commissioner Quinn. Second. Second by Commissioner Rogers. All right, any further board discussion? Anyone in the audience? And Mr. Hammond, you might, let me, before we vote here, that St. Joe Company has Got it next. graciously granted us to come on to go use that Railroad overpass, extend out there. All right. No opposition. Motion passed 5 and 0. Oh. Ye yesterday we were notified that they uh, agreed with us to. St. Joe Company. St. Joe now. Company to extend the, from the end of the port property under the, uh, the what we call the railroad overpass. Railroad overpass. Into the road we just built. We would like to get the uh, engineer to, to come up with a cost estimate. They've agreed to pay 50-50 again with that. We're way under budget. Uh, right now, we're somewhere 58,000 range, something like that, less than 60. So we still think we can do it for half of what we initially thought. Uh, so we'll bring that back to Good. you at the at the January right. meeting if you want to proceed with that. Good deal. We'll do it. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're moving right along here. Let's drop down to the janitorial contract bid number 1617-42, Mr. Hammond. That'll be K on your yes. sheet that I handed out. Yeah. We had one bid. Uh, this is actually pretty old. We've been talking to them for a while. Mr. Yeager, excuse me, uh, negotiated that down. So we'd recommend awarding that bid 1617-42 to Interstate Commercial Services for janitorial service at the Guff County Courthouse Complex. 
in the amount of fifty thousand dollars. Interstate commercial services. Is that it? Yes, sir. Interstate commercial services in the amount of fifty thousand even. About fifty or fifty five. It, it, Mr. Yeager negotiated that okay. down. We took down out to a couple of fifty, things. not fifty five. Fifty. Fifty. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, gentlemen. I have a motion here. Anyone want to entertain a motion? I will. On the uh, so janitorial contract services. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Rogers. I hear a second. A second with, with just a quick discussion. We surely thank you, Commissioner Quinn. You have the floor, sir. Just want just want to make sure they they hire somebody from Gulf County when they uh, get this contract. I hope. They, they actually already have uh, good. two or three people from, from Gulf County. Good, good, good. Some work in Gulf County. Anything yeah. else, Commissioner? That's it. This uh, group is based out at least. The ownership is out of Washington County, but they have local contracts that, that Mr. Yeager talked to, so, and they're very satisfied. All right, thank you, Mr. Hammond. All right. Any other questions, concerns, anyone in the audience? No opposition, motion passed 5 and 0. Oh. All right. Mr. Uh, Hammond, I think you and I are going to share yeah, in this. This is number L. This is your recommendation to the board yes. for vacancies on the Gulf Coast Workforce Board. Board. All right. Would you care to have them? Or you care uh, to leave is them? L in your packet. It's a recommendation to the board that uh, they appoint Patricia Hardman and James Bo Patterson to serve career source board representing Gulf County. They, uh, one of these was a vacancy that has been open for quite a while, and the other one was the John Reeves rolled off. I've uh, forward and I've spoken to both of these people and they're graciously and they will do us a magnificent job on this board this uh, workforce board so uh, I'll entertain a motion for the approval of these two appointees to the Gulf Coast Career Source Workforce Board I have a motion for these two appointees so move thank you Commissioner Roger do I hear a second second thank Mr. you Chairman. Commissioner Rich any further board discussion Anyone in the audience, any questions? Not no opposition. Motion passed 5 and 0. Bo, you and Pat, I know you'll do a marvelous job on there. You represent Gulf County graciously. You and I attend a lot of those meetings over there. And Pat served on one in, I think it's in Tallahassee. Is that correct, Pat? Years. So you're not, it's nothing new to you. All right. Thank you again. Thank you. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to. Maybe we can knock this out before we have to call a recess here. If, if, let's go to item, Mr. Novak, you, uh, uh, attorney, you're going to address. This is the opioid litigation special counsel report. Let's jump on that right quick. Yes, sir. I'll make it brief. Uh, Anthony Urpino, um, I've reviewed the engagement with the Urpino Avon Hawkins uh, law firm as well as with Levin and Papatino. Um, the chairman, I'm going to present it to him for authorization and signature. Uh, once we have them, uh, yeah in the file and to the clerk. Um, Mr. Arpino is going to make uh, uh, appointments with the commission to meet with you individually, talk to you about the litigation. I'll be participating in that, those meetings as well. Um, and following that, we'll be likely uh, asking you in January for your authorization to move forward um, in a public meeting. We'll put it on the uh, agenda as well. Um, but at those meetings, we'll schedule probably after the first of the new year with each of you commissioners. You need, is this just you need a motion on it? No, sir. Just, just wanted to give you all a report and let you know that that will be coming okay. in the coming weeks. Good deal. All right, sir. Mr. Hammond, we're back over to you. The uh, Dewberry Stump Hole Revetment Phase 7. I think it's Phase 872 or something. Yeah, that'll do. That sounds pretty correct. It's number N in your packet. Number uh, how many? Number letter N. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. I got it right here. Uh, it's Phase 7 CEI uh, Dewberry uh, proposal from Mr. Smallwood in the amount of $109,650. dollars $109,650. Revetment program. All right. You need a motion on that? Surely you do. do I, I hear a motion. So move, Mr. Chairman. Well, thank you, Commissioner Quinn. All right, do I hear a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Crone. Any further board discussion? 
any further board discussion? Anyone in the audience? Any discussion from anyone in the audience? Not if no opposition, motion passed five and oh. All right, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to address now uh State Road thirty E is extension grant request and I'm gonna have Miss uh, Sagans. I think she has three items before the board here and uh we can Miss Sagans, are you still with us? I'm right here. <laughs> there you go. And by the way, uh we're gonna have us a little grand uh not a grand, but we're gonna have us a little little girl here in a few days. Uh, congratulations to you and your husband <laughs> and I know she'll you'll be make you very proud it surely is okay Lynn uh, Thank you very much <laughs> Leanna um, this first item that I have which is O in your um, packet mm -hmm. uh, is just an extension request for the SR 30 e Cape sandblast road placement of sand uh, this is from FDOT and it's a an ongoing grant that we've had uh, since two, 2015 mm -hmm. this is just to be used for sand on Cape sandblast with the um, restore project but you just want to vote Extended, for the yeah, for it, the extension. As of right now, it um it expires December thirty first, twenty seventeen. We're asking to extend it to twenty eighteen. Good deal. All right. All right. That's that's self explanatory. We've done this numerous times. I have a motion. So moved. Thank you, Commissioner McCrone. Second. Second by Commissioner Rogers. Any further board discussion? Anyone in the audience on this uh, grant extension? If not, motion passed five and zero. Oh. All right, let's drop on down the Lake Grove Road Bridge Repairs. Award bid number 1718-03. I think we opened that at the last meeting and asked that the staff review the bids and come report back to the board. So you're here today to report back to the board. Yes, sir. Um, this bid has been reviewed by staff and um, by the engineer, and we would like to recommend that the Board of County Commissioners award uh, bid 1718-03 uh, for the construction of Lake Grove, Grove Road Bridge project to the lowest resp responsive bidder, which is Broad Spectrum Infrastructure, Inc., in the amount of $97,527.46. 97500 what? 97527.46. 46 cents there you go we got to have that all right gentlemen you've heard the recommendation we uh, uh asked the board to uh, the staff to review and report back and uh that's the low bid is that correct yes sir all right and they meet all the requirements yes it does specs insurance workman's comp and the whole nine yards yes sir they do thank you all right i'll entertain a motion to go with this low bidder for the uh repairs to the lake grove road bridge so, so move mr chairman Motion over here by Commissioner Rich, second by Commissioner Quinn. Any further board discussion? Anyone in the audience? Small words, everything good on this? Great, thank you, sir. No opposition, motion passed 5 and 0. Oh. All right, Leanne, I think you have one more high Florida Highway Beautification Grant. Okay. Yes, sir, and this is um, a project that we had applied for a few months back. This is for the landscaping along the Beacon Hill Veterans Memorial Park um, right-of-way along 98. Uh, mm -hmm. We have been awarded in the amount of $60,974, and I would like to recommend to the Board of County Commissioners that you accept and allow the chairman to sign any ne necessary documents um, that we will be receiving. We haven't yet received the agreement, um, but since I'll be out for a little bit, I would like to award or accept this award and allow you to sign it when we get it. Good deal. All right. Gentlemen. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Quinn. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Rogers. Any further board discussion? Anyone in the audience? This is out on the Beacon Hill. Veterans on St. Joe Beach, Beacon Hill. All right. No opposition. Motion passed 5 and 0. Oh. Yeah, I guess who we're going back to. Mr. Hammond, we're back over in Leanne, thank you. One, one of the changes Jeremy's going to make for January is to allow me to sign off on these where we don't have to bring it back to you. They are moving something from one location to another, and Mediacom needs a change order. I think it's change order six, change order seven, six. So we need change to order them. six, okay. It's no net change. They're upgrading equipment to accommodate building move for public works. We need you all to approve it. All right, gentlemen. Thank you, Commissioner Rogers. Second. Second. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Quinn. Brother Board Scott. Now this is on our new 
Yes, sir. Public Works building over here. All right, anyone in the audience? Uh, Mr. Cawthorn? Yeah. Everything good with that? We want our new building. We're proceeding good here. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. No opposition. No one in the audience. No opposition. Motion passed 5 and 0. Oh. All right. Now, let's go on down here. People, we don't have but just a few, and we'll wrap up here. I mean, we're down just about to the end of it. I'll, I'll take this one Whoa. if you would like. All right. To. Go ahead. Number, uh, it's S. It, we don't have the packet because it's about 400 pages, but it's it's three. Oh, no, we don't want to read all that. No. It's three, it's three agreements that, that we do every December for, for the workforce board, that uh, memorandum of understanding and staff's recommendation that you execute those documents. Oh, excuse me. I apologize. It's four. Four executions for MOU for, for Gulf Coast Workforce Board. Uh, one Kim vote to cover the four. All right, gentlemen. <coughs> I entertain a motion. So moved, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Quinn. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Rogers. Any further board discussion? Anyone in the audience on this? It's just a procedure. One in the audience. No opposition. Motion passed 5 and 0. Oh. Mr. Novak. Item number T. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to try to this make this. This is County Department Procurement Commodities, Florida Statutes 112 313. It's conflict. Yes, sir. You take it. I'll make it as brief as I can. Sure. Um, as the county changes and grows and we have new elected officials, um, we're constantly presented with uh, new issues um, and challenges. One of them being uh, under 112.313, which is the county commission, which is a Florida statute for the ethics of our public officials as well as our employees. Um, we have two of our newest members that are sitting up there with you, um, and these are good problems to have, as I've discussed with them each individually. I'm working with the clerk's office as well as the administrative staff. As we run into these issues, we deal with them, identify them, and then obviously review the statutory compliance and requirements and move forward with both policies and proper procedures. Uh, one of the issues that we run into is the purchase of candy canes and butter and gallons of milk or a loaf of bread for the county. So as we do that, um, two of our commissioners have uh, a familial tie to our two largest grocery stores in the county. So Commissioner Rich or Commissioner Rogers, um, under Statute 112, uh, Ms. Rogers works at the pig, Mr. Dern's pig. Uh, Mr. Commissioner Rich has worked in his family's business, I think, since the day he was probably brought to this earth. So these are good things. We have local leaders that are also local businessmen that are tied to our largest businesses. With that being said, as they come into office, we need to identify the county has to go to these stores to purchase these commodities, as I indicated, candy for Christmas or loaves of bread for the jail, um, so on and so forth, um, our search and rescue, our fire departments. Um, as we do that, we have invoices in the clerk's office. Um, there's about $736.81 um, of invoices that need to be paid. Um, in talking with the commissioners individually, I've asked them to please first and foremost abstain from these votes to authorize the payment of these invoices. The second is then the staff is working right now on identifying how we move forward so I can present some recommendations to you commissioners that can participate in the vote under the statute for you to continue to buy commodities at these stores we can go through a procurement process where we advertise and the county receives proposals from these stores they're in sealed bids they come in you can ask for the lowest bids and you can award it accordingly um, and the commissioners remove themselves that from that process there's also an election where you guys can the commission can go forward and solicit pro proposals from these stores throughout the county any business in the county that wishes to be considered on a rotating basis for the purchase of these commodities that I mentioned. These are the recommendations I'm going to provide to you along with the administrative staff in the first of the year. Um, I wanted to start with our elected officials. Obviously, it was a concern, and we wanted to move forward, bring it to the commission's attention. Most importantly, have the county's bills paid on time, and then develop an RFQ process where we can go out and continue to purchase from Mr. Duran or from the IJ and Weewahitchka. Um, those both processes would be compliant with Florida statute. Those are the first. The second is then we may have uh, uh, a, a familial tie under statute 112 with the history of Gulf County employees that may have a family member and a business throughout the county. So we'll first identify the commission, then we'll work with the staff and the employees. Like I said, we have a very small community of 13,000 folks. We only have a limited amount of businesses that have been long standing in the community, but these uh, issues are going to continue to come up and we'll deal with them as they do. 
but I'd ask today for permission from the commission for authorization for the clerk to pay the outstanding invoices, ask the commission to, uh, for those members that need to conflict out to abstain from the vote and fill out the proper form nine. And then, like I said, we would come back in the first of the year, both with recommendations and ask for your uh, permission to go out for um, advertisement uh, for, to solicit proposals from these particular vendors. Um, and then we'll deal with the staff in the January. All right, so that will be addressed in the January meeting. Is that correct? Yes, sir. We'll, uh, you need a vote. Yes. We'll vote on it. Well, right. The first vote is to pay our bills. Yes, sir. Pay the bills. I understand. Sir. Gentlemen, you can make motions. You can second, but you just can't. Well, you can vote, but it's highly suggested that you retain, abstain from voting. All right, so the first motion, I need a motion to pay the bills. Uh, it's seven hundred thirty-six dollars and eighty-one cents. Mr. Chairman, those are yeah. the ones that I had as of December six from the clerk's office. So there may be some others. Like I said, I'd ask for your, the commission's vote to include any outstanding invoices incurred up until today, with the abstention uh, uh, of those commissioners. Uh, yes, sir, because there may be some others that we don't have calculated in here. Okay. All right. That understood. I'm gonna pay the bills up to today. All right. I'll entertain a motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Quinn. Second. Second by Commissioner Crone. Other discussion on this. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say this. We're a small community. I think if you get to, get to talking to somebody, you'll be kin to them if you're not careful. And uh, we have to operate the county. I am not driving to Calhoun County or Bay County spend money when I can spend it right here locally. Uh, sure that. We're not the only county. There's small counties all over the state of Florida that uh, has this same uh, situation, and our attorney's going to look into it, and we're, gonna, we're not going to break the law, but if the law allows us, we're going to implement what they'll give us. So at this time, is anyone any other board discussion on paying the bills up through today? Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right, anyone in the audience? All right. We have a motion by Commissioner Quinn, second by Commissioner McCrone. Uh, I'll go. Do uh, you have any abstention? You're going to abstain from voting? Abstain. You're going to abstain from voting. So the motion passes three for paying the bills with two abstentions. And, gentlemen, you'll need to get with Ms. Uh, Roberts here before you leave, and you have to sign a form explaining why you abstain from this vote. All right. Okay. Now. Yes, Mr. Chairman. The, so we'll get another one. the second is the uh, vote of the commission to instruct and authorize the staff to formulate a list of those commodities and enable us over the holidays to go out for an advertisement to secure, and I would recommend two, of an approach for the lowest bidder on a sealed bid to come back and present to you. The second would be a rotating schedule of those available providers for those commodities in the county that we could also present to the commission, and then you can make your recommendation and selection of those uh, most beneficial to the county. Good deal, and we'll have that back at our record meeting. All yes, right, sir. gentlemen, that sounds like a very good, you know, down the middle way to address this. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Commissioner McCrone. Second? Second. Thinking about Commissioner Quinn, and we can all vote on this. Is that correct? No, sir. I would recommend oh, that those commissioners abstain. abstain well. yes, all right, just erring on the safe side. All right, anyone in the audience? All right. Hey, okay. Commissioner Rich, are you going to abstain? You abstain. abstain. Commissioner Rogers, you abstain. Motion passes three in favor. Two abstentions, and again, you're going to have to sec sign a second form. So get with Mr. Roberts. All right, Mr. Attorney. Yes, sir. And as indicated, the third would be just we're going to work with HR and the administration with regards to the personnel um, conflicts of interest for both uh, our our staff, the county uh, employees. Um, but we wanted to address these today with regards to our commissioners. We'll come back to you all after we advertise these in the new year and ask for your. Uh, further direction as to how to go move forward with the commodities in, in, in 2018. You don't need a vote on this one, do you? No, sir. That's something the staff will be Just working on over the holidays. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, Mr. Novak, we're going to stay with you right quick. St. Joe, St. Joe Company we're talking about. Yes, sir. St. So, Joe Company donation agreement. Yes. Winmark Pier. This is some more good news. It's just housekeeping. Um, we had completed a survey. We worked with Natural Resources Development. Um, the construction of that pier out at the Winmark 
uh, north parking lot, um, and we've been working with uh, Mr. Gonzalez and St. Joe Company. They uh, agreed to convey that property over to us. Our county engineers developed the uh, survey and legal meets and bounds. We need a formal vote of this commission to accept that land donation agreement, authorize the chairman to sign it, and then they will provide a deed of conveyance to us that will enable us to work with the state um, DEP to begin the uh, final permitting and construction of that pier at Windmark. I want to thank St. Joe Company for that. We surely, surely do. All right, gentlemen, I'll entertain a motion to accept the donation. So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Rogers. Your second for this? Second. Second. Thank you, Commissioner McCrone. Any further board discussion? This is the land that we're going to need for the future development of a pier, good fishing pier. That's there. correct. Anyone in the audience, any questions on this donation? Uh, no opposition motion passed five and no oh. mr. chairman yes sir yes sir uh, if I can't ask you uh, I know you're going to move on to the very last one of the bid opening for today uh -huh. and I just wanted to ask before you turned it over if I can take you all back to B B B and I'll try not to belabor it um, we uh, had four votes <laughs> we had uh, four votes this morning on the p3 statute and exactly. 255 in addition to those four votes that you voted all 5-0 on um, there was a fifth vote with regards to the JPA. The JPA requires us to pass a resolution authorizing you to sign um, that I would attach. I know the clerk doesn't know the resolution number off the top of their head, but after the meeting today, we will provide that to them. But we need a vote of the commission to authorize you to sign that resolution, which permits you to sign the JPA that we can get done today. So I'd ask you for that. All right. That's self-explanatory. I have a motion here for the... So move. Thank you, Commissioner McCrone. Second. Second by Commissioner Quinn. If other board discussion, anyone in the audience on signing these authorizations, not motion pass five and eight. All right, let's go back now. I think this is the one we've been looking for here, ladies and gentlemen. The last one is a bid opening, and I think we have it right here, and this is for some air con on the uh, air conditioning units. For our administration building, the building we're in right now. So uh, who wants to, uh, we're going to open the bids. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, you too. Rhonda or Leanna, who's going to address this? You are? Okay. All right. This is bid 1718 for the heating and air conditioning for the administration. We received two bids. First bidder is Miller, excuse me, Miller Heating and Air Conditioning. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, Rhonda. The bid amount for Miller Heating and Air is $34,467.00. Thank you. And I'd like to state that the appropriate disclaimers have been filed in the Secretary uh, in the uh, Supervisor Elections Office regarding any participants who may have interests in this bid opening. Say that again. Oh, you didn't say it correctly. Appropriate paperwork disclaimers for um, any familiar relationships have been filed with the Supervisor of Elections Office okay. regarding these bids. All right. Thank you. The second and, and final bidder is GW Services Heating and Air, and that disclaimer was also filed with the Clerk of the Court's Office as well, Chairman. Thank you. I'd like to correct my previous statement. There was no disclaimer filed with Miller Heating and Air. It was only with the GW services as been reported by Leanna. Okay. The bid amount for GW services is $27,500 and zero cents. Twenty seven we have a thirty four thousand four hundred and fifty seven dollar bid and we have a twenty seven thousand five hundred dollar bid. Is that that is correct? Correct. 
GW Services, are they local or? Yeah, they are. They are local? I, I, I'm, I know Miller. I, I, all right, well, that's good. All right, Mr. Attorney, we need to review any of this? Has been he, yes, sir. Uh, similar to other uh, capital expenditures under the statute, if you wanted to provide a conditional approval subject to the county administration's review, that it's a qualified bid, if you wanted to go with the lowest bid, sir, and that would give us the ability to move forward without coming back to you all. All right. Hard to go against a low bid, people. I have a motion to so move. We accept Second. low bid. Motion by Commissioner McCrone, and you happen to be in this business yes. too. It's a second by Commissioner Quinn. All right, any further board discussion? Anyone in the audience over this? No opposition. Motion passed 5 and 0. Oh. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, in a lengthy meeting, a lot covered today. We have a workshop scheduled, a lot done, addressed a lot of issues. But before I call for a motion to adjourn, I want to thank you again for your time to be with us, your patience. Mr. Roberts, stay around with us just a minute more. Let's all go out this time of the year. I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays and New Year. And uh, get to watch football, Butch, from now to when. So we'll be tired of that. And uh, we'll go here before we, this will probably be the final meeting of this 2017 commissioner uh mr chairman i'm sorry i got one one thing that sure uh, somebody called me about we we um talked about <clears throat> renaming some roads for veterans we had uh, a while back and we were going to do a resolution and I, it's like y'all i know y'all had plenty to do but if we could you know, put that back on the No, I mean, it, we, we had talked about it a little bit, but we hadn't ever done anything. Uh, but I know that it was state roads, and we, all we could do was do a resolution at some point in time if we could look at that. And have state has the final right, say right, on it. Right, we don't. That's right. We can that's ask right. them. So. Okay? You okay. That's, that. that's all I have. Well, again, ladies and gentlemen, we had a good, I think 2017 was a good year. A lot of things came by us, and we're looking forward to 2018. 2018 will be extremely busy. There's going to be a lot of, a lot of movement. So, again, we thank you, and we hope you have a very happy holidays. I'll entertain a motion for.